Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Well, it's time to talk about properties of the function limits. Well, these properties are very much analogous to properties of um, limits of the sequences, and I will definitely rely on that material. But at the same time, we have two different definitions of the function limits. One of them through a sequences, uh, and another through epsilon delta language. So I will try to prove whatever the properties we will discuss using both ways. Okay, so limits of the functions have certain properties. This is a lecture um, which is part of the um, advanced course uh, for um, uh, high school students and teenagers of mathematics presented on unisor.com. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because the website has very detailed um, notes for each lecture. Plus you have uh, the ability to take exams, which is like a you know very good self-testing kind of thing. The site is free, so... All right, so properties of the limits. Now, as, as I said, properties of the function limits are very much analogous to properties of the sequence limits. And the first one is um, if my function converges to some number a as x converges to some number r, then function which is a times f at x converges to a times a as x converges to r. Now, uh, let's consider that a is positive. Uh, if, a is po if, if a is negative, it's exactly the same. So it's just easier to consider a is, as a positive thing. Now, uh, I will explain it the first time in a little bit more details about how to prove this using the sequences. But for all other properties, it's exactly the same. So I might actually be much more brief in this case. So the first definition uh, of the function limit deals with any sequence of arguments which is converging to R should result in sequence of the function of these arguments converging to A. That's what it means from the definition number one of the function limit. And this is supposed to be for any sequence of arguments which is converging to R. Okay, fine. So, what do we have to prove um, using this definition if we, want, if we want to prove this? Well, we want to prove that if you take any sequence of arguments which is converging to R, then sequence of A times uh, f, of x, f, of, uh, f of xn converges to a times a. Now, since we know that for any sequence of arguments converging to r, this sequence converging to, uh, uh, to, to a, from the properties which have been proven for the, property for the sequence limits, if you have a sequence which is converging to some number, a times this sequence converging to a times that number. So that's basically, uh, this theorem is basically direct consequence from the corresponding theorem for um, limit of the sequences. And the property is correspondingly related to the properties of the sequence limits. Okay, so that's according to my definition of the limit of the function through sequences. Uh, I spend a little bit more time, maybe this first time, because all other will be exactly the same for all other properties. I'll just refer to a corresponding property of the um, sequences. But how about the second definition? That's more important, and I think it's just more interesting a as a nice logical exercise. So what if I would like to prove this using epsilon delta definition of the uh, limit? So let's remind that this thing, that the function has limit a as x uh, converges to r, means that for any 
For any um, epsilon greater than zero exists such delta that as long as my x is within delta neighborhood of its limit point from this immediately follows that f at x would be within epsilon neighborhood of limit a that's what's given now what do I have to prove in this case I have to prove that for any epsilon greater than zero exists delta such that as long as my x is within neighborhood within delta neighborhood of its limit point r my uh, function would be within epsilon uh, neighborhood from a times a this is needed to be proven so this is given and this is to be proven okay so for any epsilon all right so let's just take any epsilon first take any epsilon now how can I find this delta well in this case it's really very very simple because if I will choose delta equals to epsilon divided by a we have agreed that a is positive right so let's take this take any epsilon and then or I'm sorry it's not delta it's just epsilon epsilon prime now for this epsilon prime number two we find delta such that using this one so instead of epsilon we will use epsilon prime so for this epsilon prime there is a delta such that this implies this epsilon star, uh, epsilon prime now what is epsilon prime again this is epsilon divided by a right so it's f of x minus a less than epsilon divided by a so now we have proven this well multiply by a a is positive so it will be here a a and not this one and we have proven this particular inequality which we need right so again how did we prove this thing well we we actually physically found that delta using what first from our epsilon which is completely anything whatever we want we have to prove it for any epsilon we have derived this new epsilon prime and then using this for eps instead of epsilon epsilon prime we know basically this. this is given and that's how we got this and from this we got this that's it very simple next next property is so the first one is function times constant converges to its limit times this constant now the second property is limit of sum of two functions each of them converging to something as x converging to r then I am stating that sum is converging to sum of the limits and I will prove exactly the same way I actually built for any epsilon I will build, build delta all right uh, by the way as far as uh, definition using the sequences again it's obvious because this means 
if I will choose any sequence of x, x1, x2, xn, etc., which is converging to R, then this would be right. So for any sequence of x, xn, uh, which is converging to R, this would be this, which is a sum of two um, converging sequences. And we have already proven the theorem for sequences, so the sequence of the sum converges to the limit, which is sum of limits of each one of them. So with sequences, it's very simple. Now, with epsilon delta, that's a little bit different but as simple action. Let's just think about it. Let's just fix any delta, uh, any epsilon first, for any epsilon. What we have to prove is, well, first what, what's given. What's given is that um, exists such delta that as long as x is within delta neighborhood of R, my f at x would be within delta neighborhood of A, uh, epsilon neighborhood of A. Let's put it delta 1. Why? Because for the same epsilon, we have delta 2. for G. So as long as we know some kind of an epsilon, using the convergence of x, of f at x to A, we have found delta 1, as long as x within delta 1 neighborhood of R, this is true. And then we found, again using the convergence of the G, we found delta 2, as long as x within delta 2 neighborhood of R, this is correct. Well, how about if I will take delta equal to minimum of delta 1 and delta 2? So if this means that there is such a delta 1 neighborhood, this is delta 2 neighborhood. And what is delta neighborhood? Well, if this is R, now, this might be my delta 1 neighborhood. R plus delta 1. And this is R minus delta 1. Now, this might be R minus delta 2 and R plus delta 2. But if delta is minimum of them, then it's this interval, which is smaller than any of these. And since it's smaller, then both conditions are true. So, basically, we have found such delta for any epsilon when both conditions are true. Well, if both conditions are true, then obviously we can write the following f at x plus g at x minus a plus b right we have to prove that for any epsilon for any epsilon there is such a delta that this is less than of epsilon if my x minus r within delta neighborhood. How can I find this delta? Okay, here is a very simple solution. I will use an axiom which everybody knows. Right? So, absolute value of sum is less than equal than absolute value of 
basically if a and b both are positive then this is equality if a and b are negative this is also e equality but if they are a different sign like minus 2 and plus 5 now this is 3 but this is 2 and this is 5 so it would be greater so in this case I will do the following I will do f at x minus a plus g of x minus b right now I can make for any delta uh, for any epsilon I can find such delta that both of them are true right so let me just choose for this epsilon I will choose epsilon divided by 2 and find such a delta that would be delta 3 already right that if x minus r is less than delta 3 by absolute value then this is true and for the same epsilon 2 I will find delta 4 such that if x is within delta 4 neighborhood this is true that this is less than epsilon divided by 2 and then I will take again the minimum of delta 3 and delta 4 and that would be my final delta when both of them will be true so this is less than epsilon over 2 and this is less than epsilon over 2 which is epsilon so for any epsilon I will find such a delta when this is true so first from the epsilon I go to epsilon divided by 2 from epsilon divided by 2 I find this one this delta 3 so that this is less than epsilon divided by 2 if x is in delta 3 neighborhood then for the same epsilon divided by 2 I find delta 4 neighborhood of, of r as long as x is in there this is true and that's why the whole thing is true alright so I can always use all these manipulations to find for any epsilon I can find delta okay the third is the third property is product as you probably have guessed already product is just a little bit trickier so this is given as x converges to r what I have to prove is this okay again speaking about definition of the product um, in terms of sequences it's already it has already been proven for sequences so if I take any sequence of arguments which converges to R any then the corresponding sequence of function f is converging to A corresponding sequence of G of Xn converges to B and the product of two converging sequences uh, has a limit which is a product of two limits so with sequences it's, 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 it's done now epsilon delta is more interesting I would say well let's do some analysis f at x g of x minus a b that's what we have to somehow prove that this is a very very small any kind of degree of smallness it, it infinitesimal actually if x is converging to r so we have to prove that this is infinitesimal as x converging to r how can I prove it here is a little trick I subtracted and added a times gx well how did I come up with this um, difficult to say because probably some very very long time ago somebody showed it to me and since I remember this trick um, but anyway it, it is a little trick and why did they do it here is why because now I can separate f and g 
here is how. Remember this? So this is my A and this is my B. So it's less than or equal to f of x times g of x minus a times g of x, which is this. Right? I took g of x factor out. Plus, and here I will factor out absolute value of a. All right? Now, why did I do it? Because here, this is really infinitesimal, and this is infinitesimal as x goes to r. This is given. Now, this is the constant. So, infinitesimal times constant is infinitesimal, right? And the only thing which is kind of strange thing is, what, I don't know what to do with this one, right? Well, here is what I can suggest g goes to b, right? So, let's just assume that b is not equal to 0. Because if b is equal to 0, it's slightly different, but very simple as well. Now, if b is not equal to 0, then g, since g is infinite, it, since g is converging to b, eventually it will be let's say in this interval right well not exactly it would be b plus b over 2 and b2 which is b minus b over 2 right that's what i can definitely say so if g is converging to to b then it will be greater than b minus b2 uh, and less than b plus b2 eventually so it will be in the b2 neighborhood why well that's quite obvious since i know that for any epsilon greater than zero exists such delta that as long as x minus r is uh, less than or equal to delta, immediately follows that g of x minus b would be less than epsilon, right? So choose epsilon equal to b over 2. It's for any epsilon, right? So I choose this one. And now I have this. This is equivalent of this. Now, why did I do it? Well, primarily for this particular reason. Since I know that g of x right now is some kind of a value in between these two, as long as my delta is sufficiently small. I can actually say that with sufficiently small with x sufficiently close to to r with x sufficiently close to r this is less than or equal to uh, let's say f of x minus a times b plus b2 I just replace which is 3b over 2 Now, instead of b over 2, I can choose anything, actually, here. I can choose 1, for instance. For epsilon equal to 1, I can always find sufficiently close x to r that it would be between b minus 1 and b plus 1. Now, if I choose instead of this b1, uh, b plus 1, it would be b plus 1. So, any kind of a b plus something would work here, right? And the sign is less than or equal plus a g of x minus b right now i have constant here and constant here 
And knowing this, now this is analysis. Now how can I actually find out uh, exactly whatever I need, which is for any epsilon, find delta such and such that this is less than delta. Well, very simple. Choose any epsilon. Sorry, I didn't get that. Um, then we will find uh, a different epsilon one, let's say equals to uh, epsilon divided by 2 b plus 1, something like this. That would be even better, right? Now, whenever my x is sufficiently close to r, I can find such delta 1 that f at x minus a would be less than this. But since we are multiplying by b plus 1, as a result I will have less than epsilon over 2, right? So there is such a delta 1 when this is less than this. On the other hand, there is uh, for the same, let's say, let's take epsilon 2 equals to epsilon divided by absolute value of a. I will find delta 2 such that if x is sufficiently close, closer than delta 2 to b, uh, to r, then this would be smaller than this. And multiply by a, yeah, I should put 2 here as well. So it will be also epsilon over 2. So this will be epsilon over 2, less than or equal, and this will be less than epsilon over 2. So to make both of them satisfied, I just have to take minimum between delta 1 and delta 2, when both of them are um, um, are chosen. So again, for any epsilon, I choose epsilon 1, and find from convergence of f at x to a, find delta 1 when this is smaller than this. Then I choose, using convergence of g of x to b, I choose for epsilon 2 equals to this one, delta 2, such that this is true. And then, minimum between delta 1 and delta 2 is the delta which I need, because then this is less than epsilon over 2, and this is epsilon over 2, so the sum would be equal to epsilon, whatever I need. So what's difficult about this? Just this trick. Everything else is just trivial inequalities. And the last property. Now the last property is... Now we have multiplied, now we have to divide, right? Now I'm not going to divide two functions. I will just have... function this. So if f at x goes to a, I need 1 over f at x goes to 1 over a. Obviously a not equal to 0 as x converges to r. Now, again, speaking about sequences, it's obvious. It just follows from the property for the, for, for the sequence limit talking about epsilon delta language. So what we have to find out is, is this thing an infinitesimal if x converges to r? But let's think about it. This is equal to right? Well, a minus f of x of, or f, uh, f, f of x minus a, the same thing, because it's an absolute value. Now, if I will prove that this is just some kind of a limited uh, value, bounded on both sides, then I'm fine. As long as this not, because this is infinitesimal, right? As x goes to r. So all we need is to prove that this is not infinitesimal as well. Because if it's bounded, if it's far from zero, then infinitesimal divided by this would be infinitesimal. 
How can I prove it? Well, very simply, again, let's have epsilon equals to a over 2. Now, I find, obviously I can find delta 1 such that if x is closer than delta 1, f at x minus a is closer than n a over 2. Now, what is this? It means that a minus 8 over 2, f at x, a plus a over 2, which is a over 2, and this is 3a over 2, right? So that's how we bound it. As long as f at x converges to something which is not equal to 0, eventually it will be close enough to separate it from 0, right? So if this is 0 and this is a, obviously if it converges to a after a certain point when argument is significantly close to r I will be separated from 0 a over 2 and 3a over 2 or I can choose a over 4 it doesn't really matter as long as this is not equal to 0 I'm far from 0 now what does it mean? it means that for this particular delta 1 as long as my x is within delta 1 neighborhood this thing how can I increase the, the fraction? I will decrease denominator so I will take the smaller one, right? I will take the left left border the smaller one a over 2 within delta 1 neighborhood a over 2 is smaller than epsilon value of f, f at x now now I have to prove that this is infinitesimal but this is the constant right so it's quite simply to prove that this is infinitesimal because for any epsilon I can find uh, delta such that this is I will choose epsilon any epsilon right then I will choose epsilon star uh, epsilon prime equals to epsilon uh, epsilon divided by a squared over 2, right? No, the other way around. Multiply it. Now, for this epsilon, epsilon prime, I can find such delta that this thing is less than this and then if I divide it by this I will have so if this is less than epsilon epsilon then f at x minus a divided by a is less than epsilon. So I need this delta. Now combined with the previous, now this is not just uh, the first delta which we were using. Before that we have found delta such that f at x minus a was basically, that f at, f at x was close enough to a uh, so it's separated from zero, right? So this is separated from zero. So now I have one delta and that delta so I'll probably take the smallest the minimum of these two deltas and then I will get uh, the minimum delta is the one where both this is uh, this is true and, and, and this is true and that's why the whole thing would be less than epsilon whatever I am supposed to prove so in this and, 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 and all other cases it's a little bit maybe tricky 
to find the proper delta you have to really separate separately satisfy uh, a few different conditions but if you want to satisfy different conditions and different conditions require different deltas you just take the minimum of these deltas so whenever x is closer and closer and closer than any other requirement then all the requirements will be satisfied my f at x would be uh, greater than a over 2 and in the previous cases we have similar uh, conditions etc um, now a little bit more detailed um, notes are uh, on unizor.com for this particular lecture and it's a little bit more like a textbook I'm not taking any shortcuts I'm really proving something okay this is delta 1 this is delta 2 this is delta 3 and we, we're taking minimum of all of them etc I don't want to go to all these scrupulous details during the lecture because my my purpose was for you to understand really how this thing is supposed to be proven so it's divided into smaller pieces each small has its own requirement for the delta and then we take the minimum of these delta and w w to, 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 to satisfy all the requirements all right okay so basically that's it I strongly suggest you to read the notes for this lecture go to unizor.com to derivative um, and uh, function limits uh, this is this is lecture called properties of the limits and uh, read it very thoroughly it's uh, relatively easy reading but a little bit more I would say mathematically rigorous than whatever I was just trying to explain all right thank you very much and good luck <laughs>